In this Unreal Engine 5.6 video tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to make interactive audio bars using HLSL and blueprints. When I click play or simulate, you'll hear the audio and see all these sound bars react. We'll start off with a brand new project and we'll right click and create a brand new material and call it something like M underscore audio bar. Next, we'll open up this material. And the main thing that we'll want to make sure is that we go on to this audio bar material and create a custom node where we can enter our HLSL code. Once we have this custom node created, we have to create a number of inputs for it. So we're going to go down here on our custom node, onto our details, and we're going to go to inputs and make sure we label and add a few inputs that we'll need. The first thing that we're going to have to add is UV. So we can have UV coordinates that map the image or a sound bar to some sort of UV coordinates on a model. So we'll need to get our UVs. The next thing that we should also do is somehow get the audio level. So we're gonna add another input and we'll deal with this a bit later, but we're gonna create an input for it and we're gonna call it something like audio level. And that's gonna be how loud uh, the sound in the scene is playing. And that's gonna translate into a variable here that will determine the audio bars level. We're going to connect all this up for now just to our emissive color and we're going to start entering our code in here next but before doing that we're going to add a texture coordinate node for our UVs and we're going to make a placeholder constant with a value of zero for our audio level. So now that we have our material set up we can jump on over to the code. Our code is going to be pretty simple, but so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to input it into Visual Studio Code, but you can also just type it directly into Unreal as well. What we're going to start off with is a variable called volume. So I'm going to do float volume and make that equal our audio level. Now the problem is our audio level, uh, just, to, just to be safe that it's within a range of zero to one, we're going to saturate uh, this value. and by using a saturate node, it's a cheap way to clamp some sort of value between zero and one. So we're gonna take that audio level that determines the audio's uh, sound level, and we're just gonna saturate it so we know it's clamped between zero and one, and that's gonna be our volume. The next thing that we're gonna do is create a float three. We're gonna call this bar, and that's gonna be our audio bar, and we're gonna make it a blend, and a blend is pretty much a lerp. It blends between two values, uh, based on another value or based on some sort of opacity or some sort of uh, number between zero to one that determines is it the first blend or the second blend. So we're going to blend between two colors. We're going to blend between green and red. So we're going to do float three, one, zero, zero. And actually it should be probably the other way around, but we'll change it. So we'll blend between uh, red and also green. So R G and B. Now looking at this, um, we should start with green and when the, the audio reaches really high level, it will turn red. So I'm just going to structure it that way. I'll do green first and then red, but it doesn't really matter. We could flip this around. So those are two colors that we're blending between green and red. And then how are we blending between those two colors? That's going to be our next thing that we use here. And for that, what we're going to do is pretty much take our UV Y, our UV coordinates, and the Y space of it is going to be our, our blend. And that gives us like a nice gradient um, audio bar that starts from green and goes to red. And we can maybe take a look at this and test this out. So let's take this code, copy it, just to make sure it works go into Unreal, paste it into our custom node, and we have to return the value. We'll get like an error because we have to output something. So we'll return our bar, which is our blend that we did here. And let's see what we get. Okay, there we go, red to green. And if we change our, our preview uh, object to a plane, that gives us an idea of, of what we've done. We just created a, a very simple gradient. So we're gonna go back to our code. And now what we want to do is we, we want that audio bar, but we need to mask it 
or erase parts of it based on our audio level. So if the audio level is low, it just shows a small section of the bar. If our audio level is high, it shows more of the bar. So the way that we're going to do that, instead of just blending it by UV Y, uh, what we're actually going to do here is after doing our blend, we're going to multiply everything by a step. And we're going to make our step pretty much the UV flipped. So we're going to do 1 minus UV Y. And then we'll use our volume as a mask. And by doing this step, we're pretty much going to uh, multiply by a black and white kind of stepped value from UV uh, Y up and down. And that's going to allow us to mask out this color in various areas. Pretty much this step here, the step one minus UV Y uh, volume is going to use that volume to mask uh, a value across the UV Y. So if it's one, nothing gets max masked away. If it's like 0.5, half of it gets masked away. So if we do something like that and we do like a return bar and maybe just to be safe, flow three bar, you don't have to do it, but maybe a little bit better. And uh, we'll throw that in here. And what we should also do, and again, we don't have to do this, but you can go to your custom node here and we'll freaking out there let's see there we go go to our custom node here and make sure it's outputting float three three channels we're returning float three three channels and what do we see we see nothing here and maybe we see a bit of gray so actually that's my base color i'll set our base color to black specular to zero roughness to zero just for now um, so we see nothing but that's because our audio level is at zero so what happens if that's point one Okay, there we go. We see a little bit of the audio level. What if it's uh, one? Okay, now it maxes out. Now, it's starting from red and going to green. That's actually not what I want. I want it the other way around. Um, so maybe I have my, my numbers flip backwards here. Should be one. And then, so it should be red and then green. And there we go. Now I flopped that around. And there's our, there's our kind of working audio level. 0.5 makes it half full. 0 0.2, 0 0.1. You kind of get an idea of how that works now. So now we have our working audio bar. The thing is we need to actually pipe our sound somehow into this material. So that's the next thing that we'll do. But before that, we'll save this and our material is mostly done now. Now, one last thing before leaving our material, we have to make this a parameter so we can change it from outside of this material network. Right now, it's almost like a hard-coded value, but we want that value to be a variable that we can change. So what we're going to do is right-click on this, convert it to a parameter. We have to give it some sort of name. So I'm just going to call it something very generic, like input level, but you could call it whatever you want. And then we'll apply, save, close our material, and we're going to go create the thing in our scene that's going to give off the audio. So if you had like a boom box in the scene or uh, a bunch of speakers and like a bunch of um, audio meters and stuff, you could build that all into a blueprint that has the mesh, that has this material attached to the mesh, that plays the sound and all of it could be working together. The sound will be playing, the audio bars will be moving with the sound. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a blueprint. I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class. We're going to make it an actor because an actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world. So that fits what we're wanting to do. So we're going to create an actor blueprint and we're going to call it something. Maybe for now what I'll just call it is like BP um, audio source underscore zero zero one because I don't have really a mesh right now for for our boom box or whatever this is going to be. So I'm just going to call audio source and we're going to open up that blueprint and here's our empty blueprint. And we're going to add the components that we need in this blueprint um, to play that audio. So first thing I'm going to do is go to components here and I'm going to add um, a plane. And this is just going to be a placeholder for maybe our actual model. That would be like a boom box or something or um, a bunch of speakers or audio levels or something. So I'm just going to make a plane and we're just going to attach our audio level uh, material to this plane. So I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to go onto this plane. I'm going to go to the material 
And I'm going to drop in um, rm underscore audio bar. There we go. And then we're also going to add a uh, audio source. So we're going to add audio. We're just going to call it, we're just going to choose audio. And now we have audio that can be played from this location. And we need some sound for that audio. I'm just going to use what Unreal has built in. So I'm going to go to the sound over here and just choose like, I think they have like a, a walking. Here it is, VR world move loop. I'm just going to use that. And uh, that will just be like a, a sound. And we can kind of preview that. Like if I double click on it, it opens this up and it shows you um, this audio here. And you can see that's not looping right now. We could turn this on and make it looping. And uh, maybe I don't want to modify this, this default sound. So maybe I'll make my own sound cue. I'm just going to do that for better practice so you don't end up modifying something that's default in Unreal. But technically, you'd probably want to make a sound cue. You can name that as something, uh, but you can open up that sound cue, get the audio that you want. So I could do like a, a player, a wave player, choose your audio. So maybe that move audio or whatever audio you import into Unreal. We could make it looping and then connect it. And that'll just play it over and over and over again. And we'll save that. And I'll use that instead just so I'm not modifying something to loop that's part of Unreal's default materials. And I'm going to take that sound cue and just put that in here to our audio. So now we have like a looping sound. So when I click play, you can kind of hear that sound. So that's the sound that that audio is playing. And you probably don't want the audio to be heard throughout like the whole level or the whole scene. So you could also go down here to where it says override attenuation. And now you get controls for like how far away from the source is that audio heard. So it has like a bit of a fall off. And we can compile and save our blueprint now. So we have everything. We have a blueprint that has this plane that displays our audio level as our audio level material. And then we have our actual audio being played but we still have to get that audio level piped into our material. So how do we do that? How do we capture how loud our audio is and have that control this material? To do that, we're going to go onto our audio. We're going to scroll all the way down to the events, and we're going to do a on audio single envelope value, and we're going to add that event. And on that event, we're going to add a bit of a blueprint here that's going to take the envelope value, which is how loud our, our audio is, and pipe that into our material. So we're going to take this, we're going to connect this execution pin to a create dynamic material instance. And we're doing that on the plane, so we could just select plane here. Um, or you can manually connect it to our plane or whatever model you have there. Uh, but this just does that for us, so we'll do that. So it's taking our plane model, creating a instance of our material. What is that material? We have to select it here, so M underscore audio bar. And what we're going to do with that material is then take that execution pin and do a set scalar parameter value on material. And again, the plane. Or again, you could just manually connect it up. I don't know why it does two of them here. I'll just connect that back up. And what parameter do we want to change? It's that parameter that we created in our, in our material. So let's go back to our material. It's this parameter here that we created, input level. So we need to use that name exactly. So we're going to change that parameter called input level. So that's the parameter we want to change, input level. And we want to change it to whatever our envelope value of our audio is. And if we do that and we compile and we save and we go back to our viewport here, now we have our, our audio, we have our material, everything should be good now. So what's going to happen to test this out is we'll save all this, we'll place it in our scene, let's make sure I save the material, save everything. I'll place that blueprint in our scene. I'm just going to place it here and we'll look at that, that audio bar. And I'm going to go up here and just simulate so it starts the game playing. And let's see what we get. 
So there we go, the audio bar is moving. Now maybe I want that sound to be a bit louder. I'm not close enough to really hear it that well, so maybe I should make this audio uh, fall off much bigger. So I'm going to go back into here, back to our audio. I think I made that inner radius too small. I'll do like 500 and then fall off distance, maybe like 500 again. So plays a sound um, further out from the source. And if we want to exaggerate our audio bar, like make it feel like it's moving more than it really would, we could go into our audio bar here and just take our audio level and uh, multiply it. You know, you know, you can multiply it by five or multiply it by two or, or do something that, that really pushes it uh, much higher if you want to see that bar moving around more. So I did something like that and we were to test this out now. Simulate. Okay. Too, too loud. It's like maxed out. So maybe we could just do multiply by two. And maybe that gives us a nice, there we go. Now, probably better if you choose um, something better for audio, like a song or something. This isn't really a great example of, of perfect audio for this, but you kind of see how that works now. We're getting audio uh, level from an audio source and piping it, 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 it into our material in uh, real time. So that's kind of how you can make some dynamic audio bars. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to down in the description below, you'll also get the PDF for this video tutorial, which goes over all the steps run over in a little bit more detail. It also gives you the code for those additional styles of audio bars.